Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yisrael and this is the Asashio class destroyer, soon to be released into World of Warships as a tier 8 premium, although not without some controversy. Historically, the Japanese Navy was never entirely happy with the performance of the Shiratsu class destroyers that preceded her, but the main concerns, Shiratsu's range and speed, needed bigger fuel tanks and bigger turbines, and those couldn't be put in without going over the tonnage limit set by the 1913 London Naval Treaty. That problem went away in 1934. Japan decided not to renew its membership of the treaty, and the Asashio class was the result. She was the first Japanese destroyer designed to exceed 2,000 tons displacement, and notably she was the first to carry sonar. She would basically set the pattern for all the following special type destroyers, perhaps most obviously the Kagero and the Yugumo classes that immediately followed. Ten of these ships were built. None of them survived the Pacific War. Kasumi, the last survivor, was sunk during the events of Operation Tengo. Asashio herself fought at the Battle of the Badung Strait and helped escort the troop convoy that was to have landed on Midway Island had it not turned out to be a giant ambush by the Americans. Like most of the Japanese destroyer fleet, she was involved in the fighting around Guadalcanal and she's known to have made at least three Tokyo Express runs. She would eventually be sunk by air attack at the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, along with most of the convoy that she was helping to escort. Of the eight transports and eight destroyer escorts, all but four of the destroyers were sunk and three of those were damaged. Some 2,890 Japanese personnel were lost in two days of brutal airstrikes. Allied casualties were 13 dead, 2 bombers and 4 fighters. Yukikaze, of course, escaped unharmed. So what's Sasashio like in game and why has she caused such a stir? Well, there's little controversial about the hull. She has 15,100 health baseline, same as Kagero B. That's allied to the standard 35 knot top speed for a special type destroyer. And her turning circle of 640 meters is, again, identical to Kagero. Her rudder shift is 3.6 seconds, that's middling at best. It's better than Kagero A's 4 seconds, but it's worse than the Kagero B's 2.7. Stealth rating is also the same as Kagero and Harakaze, a best in bracket 5.4 kilometers once you fit camouflage, the concealment module, and get a concealment expert captain onto her. Her flak suite, however, has been gutted. You get two 25mm twin-linked autocannon, and some harsh language. And for all the use those are, they might as well not be there. However, the main Japanese destroy lines never really had much more than token flak, so that's really just business as usual, only more so. The artillery is a straight copy and paste of the Kagero. Six 12.7cm guns in an AXY setup, twin -link turrets, three turrets, you know the drill. Traverse, reload, damage, ballistics, they're all identical to the Kagero, so business as usual there as well. Individually, her consumables are, surprise surprise, business as usual. She gets the standard issue Japanese destroyer smoke, the standard issue engine boost, the standard issue damage control, and the 8 second torpedo booster. What's not unusual is that the reload booster is in its own slot, so she doesn't have to sacrifice her smoke generator to take it. This is something we've seen a couple of times. Akizuki has it to make up for the fact that she only has one torpedo launcher, and the original Shiratsu implementation had it as well, although that was quickly deemed to be too powerful and removed from the game. What really makes Sasashio stand out, and what's caused a lot of controversy, is her torpedo. This is a very deep water variant of the Type 93 Mod 2 carried by the Kagero. It packs the same warhead, almost 21,000 base damage, has a top speed of 67 knots, a run range of 20 kilometers, that drops to 16 kilometers at 72 knots if you accelerate the torpedo, and it packs a detection range of 800 meters. Brown alert time on this torpedo, if you don't have active detection up, is somewhere between 4.7 and 5 seconds, depending on whether or not you've got acceleration. Yep, this is a very nice little murder fish, except it can only hit battleships and carriers, cruisers and destroyers, are completely safe. Not that that's of much consolation to the battleships. The reload booster and long range of the torpedo means that, unlike most destroyers, Asashio can engage relatively early on and from comfortably outside radar range, 
while the almost pan-Asian detection radius means that if you do self-spot these torpedoes, well, it's basically too late. The end result of this is likely to be some very, very paranoid battleship drivers. And this is where the controversy really gets going. The problem starts with an already existing tendency among battleship drivers to sit back at 15 kilometers plus, angle up, dig in, and exchange shots at long range until the enemy fleet has been safely disposed of. And this works for the battleships. It works rather less well for the cruisers on the team because really, what same cruiser wants to be first into a kill box that's designed to drop a battleship? So suddenly the cruisers are reluctant to advance as well. And without that support, the destroyers start having second thoughts about advancing on top of that. So suddenly nobody wants to advance because the first person to do so is likely to get killed and potentially set off a chain of disaster dominoes that will cost their team the match. Net result, passive teams and boring games, or so the theory goes. The argument is whether Asashio, or more accurately her torpedo, is going to reinforce this behaviour or undermine it. Before I get going on this, I should note a possible bias of mine here. Japanese destroyers were my first line to tier 10, and I still have a liking for them and the Torpedo Ninja playstyle. Battleships? Not so much. I play them, probably too aggressively and not very well, but I am much happier in destroyers. Looking at the subreddit and the forums, the main concern appears to be the notion of suddenly appearing murder fish, caressing battleship hulls and making them feel uncomfortable, or just giving them that sinking feeling. As a result, a lot of people are prophesying that already timid battleships are going to get even more so, while aggressive ones are even more likely to end up dead, rendering the passive battleship meta even more entrenched than it already is. I'm... I'm not very sympathetic to this. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I spend a lot of time on the other end of the torpedo launcher. Those 15 km plus long-range hits, they need the target to be sailing so predictably that I can call where they're going to be 60 to 90 seconds later. And even then, dispersion at that range means I'll probably have to empty my tubes and maybe even pop a reload booster and empty them again to get one or two hits against a moving target. Against a static camping target, oh yeah, I'm going to have myself some fun, but, well, that's kind of what a Sashio seems to be designed to counter, so are we really surprised? Once the range closes down to 10 kilometers and the salvos tighten up to the point where I can drop the infamous murder salvo of four or more hits at a time, then Asashio's not really doing anything that the other destroyers, especially the Pan-Asians, can't already do, and they can do it to smaller ships as well. We're also ignoring all the active detection methods, catapult aircraft, carrier aircraft, hydroacoustic search, radar, picket ships. And, you know, the basic advice to battleships, which is what it's always been when you're dealing with a torpedo ninja, don't sail in a straight line. Turn every 20 to 30 seconds and throw in the occasional speed change. I suspect that people have gotten out of this habit over the last 18 months as the metas introduced more and more counters to torpedo strikes and the meta game has just shifted away from the torpedo ninja and now an OG battleship killer is suddenly back on the scene, and people are panicking. Like I said, I'm not very sympathetic to this argument. Asashio's big problem is that she is massively specialised on this one thing, torpedoing battleships. The problem is that once she runs out of obliging battleships, or she runs into something else like a cruiser, pretty much all she can do is spot for allies and yell for help. Cruisers and gumbo destroyers are a particular problem. She can't torpedo them, and her guns aren't good for much more than token resistance. Even Kagero's a serious threat to her. The artillery's the same, but Kagero's torpedoes are surface runners, and she has an extra bite at close quarters as a result. And since that engagement starts at 5.4 kilometers, it's going to be close quarters. 35 knots also makes her one of the slowest destroyers at tier eight. The only slower destroyer is Akizuki at 33 knots. Like Kagero and Harakaze, breaking contact once pursuit locks onto you can require some very fancy sailing. Ironically enough, considering the tendency of battleships to stay away from Asashio, 
The best solution for her is often just to have a cruiser or a faster destroyer chase her down. Additionally, she's an easy mission kill for a carrier. Since Asashio has no flak worth talking about, parking a squadron overhead is relatively low risk and basically shuts her down. Her torpedoes will be almost instantly spotted, she's marked for any ship in range, and she can't get away until a friendly carrier hoses the peeping toms off her. So, the crunch question. Would I buy a Sashio? For cooperative battles? No. The AI is pretty good at dodging torpedoes. It's better than a lot of players I've encountered, which is both a compliment to the programmers and a horrible embarrassment for a large chunk of the player base, and that neuters the majority of her damage. Of course, there'll be an Asashio under AI control on the enemy team, and well, <laughs> like I said, players tend not to be as good as the AI when it comes to torpedo beating. For serious competitive play, oh god, so very, very no. Asajo can crack a death ball from outside radar range, same way that she can crack a lemming train or a static battleship, but good players, and that's what you get at the serious competitive level, the ones that are frequently manoeuvring, making use of coordinated hydro, radar and spotters, those players are an Asashio's worst nightmare. In addition, the current competitive meta, where the destroyers are expected to cap and harass while the carrier aircraft handle the spotting, well that suits gunboat destroyers far better. Not to mention all those roving carrier aircraft that just love to peep on small boats that are flanking and away from friendly air support. So serious competitive? No. Honestly, I'd grab a Harikaze for the extra flexibility, but my first choice for that at tier 8, probably the Lo Yang for the US smoke and that monster hydro set that she carries. And maybe Kid if carriers were turning into a problem. Random battles, however, hmm. Asashio definitely brings a few advantages in this mode. Her mere presence will induce paranoia in a lot of the enemy battleships, and much like cracking a death ball in competitive, the extra range of her torpedoes means that run-on hits, where the torpedoes go past your intended target and then hit something else, are a distinct and hilarious possibility. The downside is that for every monster game I've had with this girl, I've had games where the battleships knew what their rudders were for, or the cruisers were screening properly, or the enemy destroyers were up front, or the enemy carrier just had planes overhead, and even one of those situations has got the potential to make life very, very difficult for the Asashio. Because she is so specialised, she's incredibly dependent on the matchmaker providing targets, and those targets being obliging, cooperative and predictable. She's at a disadvantage against every other destroyer in her tier. She's either comprehensively outgunned, she's facing surface running torpedoes, slower, or a combination of the three. Cruisers? They're a hard counter. She can't torpedo them, and even if an enemy carrier can't manage to hit her, it can still achieve a mission kill just by parking a squadron overhead and keeping her spotted until somebody else can close her down and kill her. Objectively, therefore, from the point of view of is she a good boat, objectively Asashio is probably not a ship I can recommend. She's that weird mix of overpowered and underpowered that comes with being over-specialised. She's very effective in her very narrow comfort zone and she's very poor out of it. Harakaze and Lo Yang retain enough torpedo power to be a threat to battleships at closer range and they can engage cruisers and they bring their own party pieces to the table as well. Objectively, that is. She's not a ship I'd recommend. Subjectively, and this is where things get a little weird, I've had a lot of fun with this girl. Seriously, I mean, she shouldn't be competitive. She doesn't han have the tools to handle at least half the enemy team. But she's still fun. If you like the pure, original gangster, torpedo ninja, battleship terrorizing, oh my god, where are those invisible fish playstyle that the regular Japanese destroyers used to do so well before all the changes and nerfs of the last couple of years. If you like that, then you're probably going to like Asashio. Just bear in mind that it's really all she does, and that for every monster game, you'll have one where you wish you brought Kagero, Harakaze, any other destroyer, tier 8 instead. 
I'm going to end this video with a postscript. I'm not at all sure that this is actually the best use of the Asashio. She's the last of these special type name ships to be introduced to the game, and those normally go into the tech tree. So I would rather have brought her into the tech tree as a successor to the Shiratsu, moving Akizuki down to tier 9, giving her defensive fire along the way, and opening the way for the never-built Super Akizuki, also known as Project V7, Akizuki Kai, and Kitakaze at tier 10. If you restrict the torpedoes to the stock type 90s, fold the reload booster into the smoke slot, and increase the rate of fire slightly, you'd have a nice transition to the gunboat roll, and you could also add a B-hull based on Kasumi's late war refit, which drops the X turret to go down to four barrels, but could get an even faster rate of fire and access to defensive fire as an alternative to engine boost, and that would just smooth the transition from Shiratsu to Akizuki, which at the moment is a very jarring change of gameplay. But there is undoubtedly a place for a Torpedo Ninja at Tier 8, so what would I replace a Sashio with? Well, first and foremost, I'd change the torpedoes. I'd cut the damage back hard, something around the 17, 18,000 mark, high end of the Pan-Asian damage range, but I'd allow it to hit cruisers as well, to give her a bit more flexibility, at the price of making her less of an unholy terror for battleships. And then I'd mount it on a Shiratsu hull, and retain the separate reload booster. Now this has a couple of things at tier 8. First off, it would have best in bracket concealment. If you do the numbers on a Shiratsu class at tier 8 with concealment module, you get a detection of 5.2 kilometers. However, she only does 34 knots, so even slower than an Asashio, and because her X turret doesn't super fire, she has a significantly worse artillery setup. However, she still has two quad launchers, still has the torpedo power, and still plays the torpedo ninja role just as well as Asashio. She's just a bit worse when she's caught off guard, but hey, ability to torpedo cruisers kind of compensates for that. There are two obvious candidates here. The obvious historical candidate is Shigure, one of the Shiratsu class destroyers, possibly the most famous historically, and one of the lucky ships that the Japanese Navy had. The other ship, however, the other candidate for this one, well, she'd certainly get more recognition. She already gets her meme cited on the wargaming stream. She'd probably sell even better. You all know who I'm talking about.